Hey everyone, I'm Luke from Weld Pro, and today I'm going to show you how to weld aluminum with the brand new TIG 250 that just came out from Weld Pro. The TIG 250 is a feature packed TIG and stick welder that's capable of pulse and has many other onboard options. I'm going to prepare some 8th inch aluminum test plates to do some welds on. First, we're going to walk through the menu and make sure we're set up correctly for aluminum. There are a few settings that need to be adjusted to correctly weld aluminum. Begin by energizing your machine and wait for the display to turn on. Ensure the machine is in TIG mode by pushing the button in the upper left hand corner of the display. Because we're welding aluminum, it's important to ensure that our welder is set to AC. The TIG 250 is equipped with a pulse welding mode, but for today's purposes, we'll be on standard. There's also a 2T and a 4T trigger option for interlocking trigger on long welds. Let's enter the menu by pressing the leftmost menu button on the display. We'll begin by adjusting our preflow rate. Preflow can be helpful with aluminum. Let's adjust our preflow up just a hair to 0.6. Use the right menu button to move on to the next setting in the menu. The next setting that we'll adjust is our starting amperage. On AC, you'll see that the starting amperage is a minimum of 10. The next setting is our upslope. It's important that we have our upslope set to zero. If you're using the trigger switch, you can adjust the upslope to help you control your arc better. The next setting in the menu is your peak amperage. I'm going to adjust mine up around 150, 155. Aluminum is very thermally conductive, so I'm going to run a higher amperage. This way, if I need the heat, I have it. The TIG 250 is equipped with the ability to adjust your AC frequency. From the factory, this should be set to 60 Hz. The AC balance setting allows us to balance between negative and positive polarity during the AC cycle. We want to make sure the setting is set to 30% cleaning action. Go ahead and adjust your downslope to zero, just like the upslope. We'll also make sure our ending amperage is 10 amps and that our post flow is set just a little longer to help prevent any contamination. Finally, if you'd like to save this setting, you can press and hold the left menu button for three seconds to save. Now that our menu is set up, it's important to note I'll be running 100% argon shielding gas and I'll be running this at about 25 cubic feet per hour. Aluminum can be susceptible to contamination, so I'm going to run my number six gas cup to ensure adequate gas flow over the weld. If you're already using the 2% lanthanated tungsten that came with the TIG 250, you'll be fine, and this tungsten should hold a point well. If you're using a pure tungsten, your tungsten will develop a ball on the end, and the arc can be a little more difficult to control. Aluminum typically has a heavy layer of oxidation on the exterior of it. Mine in particular has been sitting for a while, so I'm going to want to take a clean wire brush and eliminate the oxidation off the surface by wire brushing it aggressively. Ensuring that your workpiece is nice and clean will eliminate the need for you to move towards the cleaning side of the balance. This will ensure you can get maximum penetration with the least heat input to your torch. For my eighth inch test pieces, I'm going to go ahead and use a 330 seconds 4043 aluminum filler material. 330 seconds is a nice size material and it will ensure I don't cool down my puddle too rapidly when applying filler. Starting the arc for an aluminum weld is no different than with mild steel. Get your tungsten as close to the plate as possible and establish your arc. The only difference will be we'll need to preheat the metal just a little bit in order to achieve a puddle. Because of the characteristics of aluminum, it can take a little while to develop the initial puddle. Also something to note, the puddle on aluminum looks slightly different than on mild steel. On mild steel, you often see a very clear molten liquid puddle. On aluminum, this can often look just like a mirror, so it can be difficult to tell when you have established a puddle. Let's go ahead and strike an arc and begin welding on our test piece. Gently press your pedal to establish your arc. As the arc establishes, you'll see some of the cleaning action happen to remove the oxidation off the plate. You can use this cleaning action to preheat a little bit of your weld pool ahead, as well as to remove some of that oxidation from the surface. Return back to your starting point, keeping the entire weld inside of the shielding gas. Increase your amperage slowly until you see that mirror-like puddle develop. As soon as you see the puddle develop, begin to add filler material. It's important that you add filler material and travel in a very consistent manner. If at any point your puddle gets to be too wide or flat looking, you can reduce your amperage using the pedal. 
Opposingly, if you're adding filler and your puddle is looking too cold, you can increase the amperage to increase the puddle size and keep a consistent weld profile. At the end of my weld, I like to add a few extra drops of filler and slowly extinguish the arc. Our first pass turned out looking really clean. There was one tie-in spot in the center that you can see. Practice will increase the consistency of your bead. That first weld came out looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and overlap a second weld and we'll step it back just a little and see how it looks. Go ahead and push the pedal to establish the arc. Preheat your material and begin to add filler as soon as you see the puddle develop. Just like the last pass, practice adding filler consistently as well as keeping your travel speed consistent. These two factors, as well as the distance of your tungsten from your workpiece, will increase the consistency of your weld profile. Changing the size of your filler material can have an effect on the way the weld looks. Keep overlapping passes for more practice. You can see here what a few overlapped welds should look like. Again, I can't say it enough. The more you practice, the better your welds will look and get that stacked dime effect. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you learned something about the TIG 250 as well as welding aluminum. If you haven't had the opportunity, take a minute to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Enable your notifications, that way you'll be alerted the minute we release the latest content. Thanks again for tuning in and look forward to more welding videos to come. Again, I'm Luke from Weld Pro and from all of us here, we can't wait to see what you build with your brand new TIG 250.